Let's look at STC constraints. In this module, we'll identify the constraints on the different types of design objects after identifying what design objects are, and then look at design level constraints, environmental constraints, and all the different types of constraints that there are in uh, your uh, STCs. Constraints generally provide uh, all the specifications that a design must meet through optimization. So you can have constraints for clocks, external constraints, power constraints, uh, yield constraints, net delay constraints, environmental constraints, and even constraints for design rules for manufacturing. Now, you can actually uh, use a certain uh, constraints uh, to tell the tool what you need to achieve through these constraints and then later on verify uh, the same achievement uh, through these constraints. So uh, for the purposes of this course, we will only stick to the uh, timing related constraints and uh, ignore all the other ones. The STC constraints are the standard format for writing constraints in the uh, design industry. STA tools have their own style of writing constraints. Uh, each tool actually dumps out its own type of tickle syntax constraints, but uh, at the same time, uh, all of these uh, writing variations that you see, or styles that you see, uh, they're all considered equivalent uh, for the purposes of um, writing your constraints. So if you, uh, when you write out your constraints, you might actually write it out uh, with very simple format uh, where uh, you just say create clock, dash period, waveform, and specify the uh, clock name uh, or the port name. But um, uh, something that is generated from a design compiler or prime time might use different uh, floating point numbers or specify uh, get ports in there or something like that. So all these different variations are functionally equivalent. It's just some tools prefer one way or the other. If we were to group the STC constraints, you would group it into operating conditions, environmental uh, related stuff, and um, your design rules, uh, power related stuff and uh, timing related stuff and finally uh, wire load model related stuff. So all of these different uh, constraints uh, are uh, specified uh, to actually achieve the common goal uh, which is to meet timing for your design. In order to set the constraints let's actually categorize the design into different design objects you might have your design, uh, which is the container for the entire circuit, and then you might have cells or blocks, and then you have ports, uh, which is essentially an entry or exit point into the design, and uh, you have your pins, which are necessarily the ones that are around your uh, blocks uh, for an instance or a hierarchical port or design or sub-design. And then clocks are the sequential cell drivers. Uh, and then you have nets, which is the uh, wires or the interconnect uh, between the cells and design ports. So your operating conditions are the ones that affect the entire chip, or if you're constraining a block in this case, uh, then those affect the entire block. You would apply constraints like power constraints or wire load models, things like that, to the cell or the block object. To tell the tools what the surrounding environment actually looks like, uh, you might apply uh, constraints, uh, environmental constraints, to a port object, uh, including uh, set drive or things like that. Uh, to that particular port object or the entire uh, design object. Pins are like ports of your sub-design. So basically any constraints that are applied at a hierarchical port or pin uh, level of a design, uh, that kind of constraints would be applied at the uh, pin level. 
if a port is actually defined as a clock, uh, then basically that becomes a clock object. So you would actually define uh, any uh, period or anything related to a clock object uh, on a clock object. You can apply timing constraints to net objects. Um, wide load models are typically uh, for the purposes of calculating the delays of these net objects. So therefore, you can actually get the uh, net object and identify what the delay on that particular object is. Try the following activity to improve your understanding. Try the following activity to improve your understanding. 